in this screencast video lecture we are going to see about the sporulation which commonly occurs there in the gram positive bacteria before going into detail first we try to understand what is a spore spores are metabolically dormant form of bacteria usually formed when growth ceases that is stops mainly due to the following reasons maybe of a exhaustion of nutrient may be due to variety of environmental stresses that can able to kill the vegetative form of the bacteria that leads to formation of the spore cells sporulation may be resulted due to the various kind of stress that may be mediated through heat desiccation irradiation and even the use of chemical such as ethanol and chloroform can be able to induce the sporulation when spores were exposed to favorable condition that is return of a favorable condition their locality may lead to germination and outgrowth of the vegetative cell from the spore cell formation of spore is referred as a sporulation so the sporulation can occur within the cells that is the endospore formation a common attribute of the gram positive bacteria whereas sometimes the spores can be external to the cells which is commonly referred as exospores which may not have a much heat resistance or radiation resistance as that of the endospore but still they are formed during the unfavorable season here the typical example is methylocyanus now we look at some detail about the spores a number of gram positive bacteria that belongs to the phylum firmicutes can form a special resistant dormant structure referred as a endospore endo means it is present inside that is present inside the cell it is referred as a endospore endospores develop within the vegetative bacterial cells of several genera say bacillus clostridium sporosacina and others they all found to have the endospores under the unfavorable condition these structures are extraordinarily resistant to environmental stresses in the form of heat ultraviolet radiation gamma radiation chemical disinfectants and desiccation in fact certain studies have proved that endospores can able to remain viable even up to 1 lakh years because of their resistance and in fact their endospore producing ability make certain pathogens highly dangerous that is the endospore production gains a lot of practical implication there in the field of food microbiology industrial microbiology and medical microbiology endospores that have been formed by the bacterial cells can be examined both under light as well as electron microscopes since spores are impermeable to most of the stains they are often seen as the colorless areas there in the vegetative cells of the bacteria that have been treated with methylene blue and other simple stains some special spore stains are commonly used to stain the spore portion which makes them highly visible the spore position there in the mother cell or sporangium is frequently differing among the different species of the bacteria making it a considerable importance there in the identification say sometimes the spore may be centrally located as in the case of clostridium bifermentans sometimes they may be close to the central portion and associated there with a toxin crystal that is the second one the classical example for this is a bacillus thuringiensis the third one is a spore that have been present there in the terminal portion and it is of a oval shape which commonly forms in the clostridium ternicium then the fourth type of spore is one that is present there in the central portion and it is highly bulged which is a characteristic feature of the bacillus pericus in the fifth case the spore may be terminal and round shape the classical example is clostridium tetani and the sixth case is the one in which spore is so large that it swells out of the sporangium this occurs in the bacillus anthracis spores and the last one that is the seventh case is entirely different that is multiple spores may be formed inside a single vegetative cell which is a characteristic feature of the bacteria metabacterium polyspora that generally lives inside the digestive tract of the guinea pigs 
Next, we look at the structure of the spore. So, when an adverse condition is resulted, vegetative cell is changed into spore cells. In the right hand side diagram, a bacillus anthracis endospore structure has been revealed. From the outermost region, if you look at, exosporium is outermost to the spore followed by spore coat and the next region is the cortex of the spore and finally the core wall that is CW is being shown there. Inside the core wall you can able to find the protoplast that is composed of nucleoid as well as the core ribosomes. So this is the overall structure of the spore. The electron micrographic studies shows that endospore structure is a complex. It is often surrounded by a thin, delicate covering called as an exosporium. A spore coat lies beneath to the exosporium and it is composed of several protein layers that make it fairly thick. It is impermeable and responsible for the spores resistant towards the chemicals, radiation, etc. The subsequent region is the cortex which may occupy as much as half of the spore's volume and rest beneath the spore coat, which is in turn made up of peptidoglycan that is less cross-linked compared to that of the vegetative cell's peptidoglycan. The spore cell wall, which is also referred as a core wall, is inside the cortex and it exactly surrounds the protoplast or the core, which consists of the nucleoid as well as the ribosomes. The core has the normal cell structures such as the ribosome and nucleoid, but it is metabolically in an inactive condition. Even after several studies, it is not precisely known that how endospore can able to resist the heat as well as the lethal agents impact on them. However, 15% of the spore's dry weight usually consists of dipiclonic acid, which is referred as a DPA which is in turn complex with the calcium ions and it is located there in the core of the spore. It has been thought that these dipiclonic acids play a major role there in the spore's heat resistance. Calcium aids in resistant to wet heat oxidizing agents and sometimes to the dry heat. It may be the calcium dipiclonate complex that stabilizes the spore's nucleic acid. But recently, certain specialized small acid soluble DNA binding proteins have been discovered inside the endospore. They saturate the spore DNA and protect it from the effects of heat, radiation, desiccation and chemicals. Dehydration of the protoplast appears to be another important way in which it is protected against the heat resistance. The role of cortex is to osmotically remove the water from the protoplast thereby protecting the spore from both heat as well as radiation damage. The spore coat plays role there in the protection against enzymes and certain chemicals such as hydrogen peroxide. Thus, different structures of the spores play resistance against the different factors that are affecting the pores. Finally, spores contain some DNA repair enzyme. This DNA is repaired during the germination and outgrowth of the spores when it has been subjected to a active growing condition. That is formation of vegetative cells from the spores. Now, we look at the events or stages of sporulation. So, sporulation is defined as a process by which spores are formed from vegetatively growing bacteria and it is formed in response to nutrient depletion. That is the first and foremost reason for the spore formation. These spores are resistant to desiccation, staining, disinfecting agents, radiation and heat. That is, it can able to tolerate up to 80 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes when it is put into the autoclave. The best studied examples of bacteria for sporulation includes Bacillus and Clostridia. Sporulation is also favored by high cell density and it can be initiated by depletion of source of carbon, nitrogen or under some condition the depletion of phosphorus can also initiate the sporulation. It is well known that 
A fall in the concentration of nucleotides GTP and GDP always associated there with the start of the sporulation. Now we look at the stages of sporulation. Among the various stages, the development of spore takes place inside the mother cell, especially from the stages 3 to 7. For this reason only it is often referred as a endospore formation that is forming of spore inside the vegetative cell. In total, you can able to see 7 stages there in the sporulation, which is coming from stage 1, stage 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. If you look at the first figure here, it is a normal cell, okay, a vegetative cell which is referred as a stage 0. It can be able to undergo a normal asexual reproduction that is binary fission which results in the formation of two cells. Under the nutrient depletion condition, it may take up the sporulation process which is referred as a stages or events of sporulation. In the first stage, the nucleoid is converted into an axial filament like structure. Stage 2 defines the completion of a division of septum at one pole of the cell. This division produces two cell types. One is with a small cell which is also referred as a pre-spore. Sometimes it is also called as a four-spore and the larger mother cell. Thus, the Sporulation is a asymmetric septation process that takes place in the bacterial cells. The stage 3 defined as the completion of the engulfment of the pre-spore that have been formed in the earlier stage by the spore mother cell itself. And in stage 4, the formation and deposition of the two layers of the cell wall material, namely the cortex and the primordial germ cell wall will be established mainly between the opposed membranes that surrounds the engulfed pre-spore structure. And if you look at it in the stage 5, it mainly constitutes the deposition of layers of coat material, mainly the coat formation around the outside of the pre-spore. The sixth stage is mainly related to the spore maturation. The pre-spore has matured now into a heat resistant spore, but Still, the spore has been located within the spore mother cell, that is within the vegetative cell of the bacteria. If you look at into the seventh stage or final stage of the sporulation, the mother cell or vegetative cell is lysed and it releases the matured spore. This matured spore, when it is exposed to a right nutrient condition, they can germinate and outgrow as a vegetative cell which is also referred as a stage 0. So, again from that, it can go into a normal cell division that is binary division or in the nutrient absence, it can again go into the sporulation process.